So I saw a clip on on um, on Twitter from a, a conversation that Matt Walsh had with like a gender um, educator, ther- well, that was a therapist, teacher. And after I watched it, my basic take was like, hey, I think this is a good conversation to have. But Matt Walsh doesn't seem particularly interested in actually having the conversation. He just seems to be setting up for a gotcha moment onto the gender per- the, the gender uh, teacher. Right. So the gender professor. Yeah. So I have no problem with him disagreeing, but he wasn't there for like an honest conversation. And I'm realizing that I have a very conservative audience who doesn't, li- they don't really listen to what I have to say and respectfully disagree. They just kind of melt the fuck down. A lot of people were just like, yeah, well, they couldn't answer the simple question. And I've actually answered it about four times in that video because I like to ramble a lot. And they and, and again, this was like the whole gotcha thing. And it's like, yeah, Matt, Matt Walsh asks, like, well, what is a woman? Right. And the guy after he asked this guy after he set him up and the guy could realize that it was a gotcha moment. So he's like, a woman is someone who identifies as a woman, which Matt Walsh said, well, that's a circular answer, which is true. And then he referenced something about um, gender norms in particular societies being like having it being based off of. And so like that's where I said, I think. Do I think my audience is left or right? I think that they're somewhere in the middle at some point. Depends on the person. You know, if we put Matt Walsh in there, all the conservatives will kind of get upset and blah, 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 blah. Probably have a more conservative leading audience, honestly. Anyway, I asserted the answer. I think a woman, not gender, socially, not biologically, a biological woman, you, you know, the JJ uterus is somebody who identifies as a woman and express, or somebody who identifies as a woman and makes a reasonable attempt to express themselves as a woman in society. They actually attempt to express themselves as a woman. Now, a lot of people would say, well, that's circular. And I did elaborate. And I said that what a woman is from a social perspective is very different depending on the society. However, like, yeah, there's some characteristics. Realistically speaking, if you identify any singular characteristic outside of, you know, vagina and whatnot from a gender perspective, a woman could be any of those. A woman could be short, tall, fat, skinny. They could be muscular. They can be not muscular. Um, They can have long hair. They can have short hair. What the way that we view gender in society now is almost irrelevant. Like think about it from a societal perspective of like working. We don't you're not going to say a woman or a man can't do a job because they're a woman or a man. Right. Um. You will say that, like, you will set a particular standard for what the job is, and then you'll say, like, okay, you have to adhere to this standard, and if you can't, you don't get the job. And different jobs are going to uh, be potentially better for generally men versus women. Like, more physical jobs are probably better for men, right? Um, at the end of the day, because I talked to my wife about this, and we talked more about, like, what does it mean to identify as a woman anymore? And, like, that's where the the, the conversation should be focused, right? Because if you have a trans woman, in my opinion, that's not super passable, right? I could see why it'd be uncomfortable for them to enter the, the, the women's bathroom. Or I don't. I totally get why a, a trans woman shouldn't compete in women uh, sports with cisgender women because they're going to have an unfair advantage. Um. So yeah, one thing I would say to people who might disagree, right? Is the question is like, okay, if you look at somebody like Blair White. Is this is this a woman to you? Does is this a woman? Would you feel comfortable with them going into the male bathroom because they're a trans woman? That's where the conversation goes. I feel like most people are like, yeah, I'm okay with her going to the male, the, the woman's restroom. That that's a woman, looks like a woman, right? And then you look at somebody like I can't Google it on screen, hold on. <laughs> you look at somebody like Buck Angel. I can't the only reason I can't Google is because they're a porn star and I don't want them to they're okay. You look at uh, Buck Angel. Do you think that this person should go into the woman's restroom? That's that's a, that's a biological woman. And then we start getting into the conversation. Like, okay, it's obviously a little more complicated than we think. A lot of the conversation around what is and isn't a woman essentializes around protected spaces for uh, cisgendered women, right? Um, that's a biological woman, yeah. And so, like, that's where a lot of the conversation gets directed. So clearly, a lot of people would look at Buck Angel and go like, yeah, I think Buck Angel is a guy. And so like to an extent, it seems like your acceptability of trans people does hinge on their what we call passability, right? So if they look like a guy, like I would be, I would feel uncomfortable with Buck Angel going into a woman's restroom, right? Because it's a very masculine person who the social narratives, they could overpower somebody and like hurt them in the bathroom. That's usually the argument why we shouldn't let trans women in the bathroom. 
But what about you know, cis, what about trans men going to the bathroom with women? You get the conversation. So that was what I said. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, I think what a woman is is kind of just like becoming less and less relevant as time goes on. Like, what does it mean to be a woman? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't think it really matters as much anymore. Obviously, you may want to fuck women. I totally get that. And I think that like trans women and trans men should have to tell you that they're trans or they should tell you that they're trans before you start diddling or that would be quite violating to you um, if they lied about it. But yeah. Okay. Let's get, let's get this going. Talk to a lot of people for uh, my film, What is a Woman, which is streaming now exclusively on the Daily Wire. Oh, you know what's so funny? I keep getting uh, I keep getting advertisements for What is a Woman on my channel. And people are like, are you okay with this? It's like, why wouldn't I be okay with it? Like, I disagree with the film, probably. I, I mean, I've been watching bits and pieces clearly through here. Um, <laughs> it's like, who gives a fuck? I don't care. Like, whatever. It, like, why, why hide the conversation? I'd rather have the conversation, you know? And you go to whatiswoman.com and get signed up and you can watch the film no. right now. Many of the conversations we had were unintentionally hilarious. Many were disturbing. Veering significantly over to the disturbing end of the spectrum is my interview with Dr. Michelle Forcey, Obama. who is, okay. as you'll hear her proudly identify herself, a gender-affirming pediatrician, also an abortionist. Uh, we flew up to uh, okay. Providence, Rhode Island uh, to speak with Dr. Forcey. She was, you know, friendly enough at first. And okay. what we found in many of the interviews that you'll see... And that's a whole other conversation. I'm very hesitant about kids transitioning. In what is a woman is that gender ideologues are very polite and nice right up until the moment when you express any skepticism at all. Okay. But before I'm we ready. get to that point, um, where ready. things really start to sort of fall apart, let's get to know Michelle a little bit. Okay. Watch. Okay. My name is Michelle Forcier. Um, hey, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on one second. My name... I was just trying to. I thought that this this sign here, this weird graffiti, said trans. I don't know. Ms. Michelle Forcier, um, and I have a medical degree from University of Connecticut Residency, University of Utah Pediatrics, and I've worked for a number of different Planned Parenthoods for 20 years. Okay. I do advanced contraception and abortion, as well as gender hormones, and sort of looking at the whole sort of schema of gender, sex, and, and reproductive um, justice. So you've done a lot of work in this field. Could you just start by telling us? Sure. Uh, uh -huh. At what age can a child first begin to? transition into another gender or identify themselves as a gender different from how they were born okay so this is a whole conversation about what it means to transition just letting you guys know there is a you can start transitioning without any hormones like it would be called social transitioning so let's say your kid's like i'm a girl and they're like a biological boy that's and they start identifying as a boy and like dressing like or excuse me they're a biological boy but they look what they they're they're saying they're a girl excuse me i'm getting confused and they started like dressing like a girl, well, not that would be considered like a a um, it would be that would be considered a social transition. Now, me personally, I try to personalize these things. Like, what if I had a kid? And I think a lot of the hesitation comes from like pretty much every single trans person that exists says that when they were younger, they knew that they were trans. The problem is, is that like the conversation is getting a little weird, where I don't think people are necessarily acting in the right way. So, for instance, I would say most people. Let's say you had like a biological boy and they're like i'm a girl most people would say like oh whatever i don't care and like just kind of move on from it and not play into it which is probably or, or they'll say like no you're not which is probably in my opinion the right way to operate you shouldn't really want your kid to be trans i'm not saying there's nothing wrong with trans people but like it's clearly very distressing and upsetting to be trans it's a very hard struggle you shouldn't really want your kid to have a struggle in life i think that there's an idea that like some people and it's probably happening instantly go like yes you're a girl and they start leaning into it so hard that the kid gets incredibly confused kids are very malleable Right, and that would be, in my opinion, considered like a very heavy social conditioning. Almost, if you're like, "Oh, you're saying you're a girl? Well, let's get you a Moana doll. Uh, let's get you a dress. Let's paint your nails. Let's give you a girl name. Let's do that." When, like, you know, for all we know, maybe the kid just like heard it on TV. Maybe the kid really does feel like a girl. Maybe there actually is like a legitimate, like, biological reason that they're a girl, which seems to be the most of the case, either biological or in the womb impact. Or maybe they just kind of heard something, and now you're confusing the fuck out of them. To me, I would just be like, "Okay, whatever." Like, now nah, maybe you're not. Like, I'd be like, "Yeah, you're not." And just kind of move on. And if this pattern kept happening over years, all of a sudden I'd be like, okay, this might be like a real thing. And so they get older and older to the point where it starts distressing them. And I'd be like, okay, let's go to a therapist, right? I mean, let's say that's like eight or eight or nine years old. Okay, we'll go to a therapist. Then the question about transitioning comes up from, from a non-medical sense of just like uh, identifying. I'd be like, I, like I'm not going to lie. I would be... I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that for my kid, but I'd be like, okay, I want my kid to be happy. So we would like explore like, okay, what that means. Then it gets to the point of puberty when it comes to puberty blockers. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think I would want my kid on puberty blockers because like, 
what if them going through their male puberty would actually make them go like, oh, I have more of a testosterone balance. Maybe I'm actually a boy again. Or, um, you know, how do you make that decision at like 10 years old to transition? And then you, you no longer like you could potentially become completely infertile because like you never went through any, you didn't go through your male puberty. So like your, your spermies don't really develop. And now all of a sudden you can't have a baby when you become an adult. You know, it's just like a real thing that could happen. You know, uh, I'm not saying that going temporarily on hormone blockers will make you infertile, but I'm saying like if you go on hormone blockers and then you go through a puberty, like a female puberty, when you're like a biological boy, like your sperm, I don't think are going to be able to develop to the point where you're going to be able to have kids. I feel like that's a really harsh decision for a child to make. I'm not saying that they're going to grow out of it. I'm just saying like, how do you make like an absolute like yes, no kind of a thing? I feel like you individually have to explore this option. And, and unfortunately, though, in order to do that, you have to like do experimentation like you'd have to track kids transitioning and almost experiment on kids so it's like tough man it's like a tough it's like a whole tough thing i just hope that I, my kid isn't trans because i don't want to have to de experience this or deal with this issue because it's going to be like really hard difficult complicated nuanced and, and it's not going to be an easy choice to make um and i feel like a lot of parents are probably the good parents are probably going through that sperm bank before transitioning would be a must for my kid yeah it's like twelve hundred dollars a year to store your kid's sperm isn't that fucked up? It's crazy. It's just not an easy choice to make. And I think that's where a lot of people come from. It's like, hey, I'm a parent. I'm trying to do my best. And like, you're making it difficult for my kid to be happy. That's where it would come from. Because I can't imagine like understanding how it feels to have a trans kid and like trying to do what's best for your kid until like you have that situation. So this is a really fucked up topic. And I lean against giving kids hormones, but maybe it is the right call. I don't really know. Because on the flip side, if my kid's going through a male puberty, they're saying they're a girl and they start cutting themselves like, fuck, what do you do? Yeah, you just kill yourself. You know, what are you supposed to do? Is that what you're supposed to do? Let them kill themselves? Or you're like, fuck, I guess like they're really having like an immense amount of distress here. Like I need to, you know, it's, it's so hard. It's so hard, bro. So difficult. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender. Some children okay, figure so. out their gender really early. And the reason why we are, say, oh, that's, it's. Wait, hold on. What? You know that um, babies and infants different from how they were born. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender. There's research that show that babies and infants understand gender. I just don't think that there's a whole lot. How? how? Like, do they understand, like, really basic gender roles? Like, I just feel like they don't have, they're not super equipped to understand that. But gender. okay. Some children figure out their gender really early. And the reason why Maybe. we are say, oh, that's, that's interesting or important is because they're figuring out their gender identity is not necessarily congruent with their sex assigned at birth. When the, when the okay. doctor sees the penis. So this thing is like, how do you flesh that out? Like a genuine feeling of that or just a kid being like in influenced by something that they might see or hear? You know what I mean? This one says this is a male, has the sex of male. That's a arbitrary distinction. Telling that family based on that little penis that your child is absolutely 100% male identified no matter what else occurs in their life, that's not correct. So what does gender affirmation care yeah, a big okay. component of? If we walk through yeah. a child is sitting down with you, it's... Do you think that she means babies can tell the difference between male and female people? That's possible. Like, that makes sense. Like, you can tell the difference between your mom and dad. Okay. Questioning yeah. their gender. What's the gender affirmation process? Affirmation means that as a pediatrician, as someone who says my job is to provide the best medical care for you, okay. is I need to listen really carefully. And how I put it in words for kids so that they can understand it is, tell me your story. Where have you been in terms of your gender and your gender identity? Where are you right now? And more excitingly, where would you like to be in the future? Have you ever met a four-year-old who believes in Santa Claus? Mm-hmm. So this is someone who believes that a fat man is traveling through the sky on a flying reindeer at lightning speed, coming down his chimney with presents. Yeah. Would you say that this is someone who maybe has a tenuous grasp on reality? They have an appropriate four-year-old handle on the sure. reality Agreed. that's very real for them. Agree. Yes, yeah, true. But okay. Santa Claus is real for them, but yeah. Santa Claus is not actually real. Yeah, well, and, but Santa Claus does deliver their Christmas presents. Well, yeah, but he's not real, though. I, honestly, the thing, that, the thing that's upsetting me the most is that Matt's trying to suggest that Santa Claus is not real when I remember seeing him all the time as a kid. I feel like this is not correct. Yeah, the same could be said as religion. Yeah, you're right, honestly. People are going to go fucking ballistic because he said that and because I reflected that. But like, kind of, you know, um, I guess, you know, as a... There's no objective truth behind it. I know what you're saying. <laughs> Jesus Christ. To that child, they are. When I see a child who, you know, believes in Santa Claus, and then let's say this is a boy and he says, I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. This is someone who can't distinguish between fantasy and reality. So how could you take that 
as a reality? I mean, it's a good question. What I would say is that when it comes to like, you could tell your kid that Santa Claus doesn't exist and they wouldn't believe it. The question comes down to like, I don't know, because it is a very tough question. You have a kid that like, how the fuck do they know what's going on? Um, but if you brought it to something else, like let's say if a kid's being molested, like by this logic, we could never decide if the kid was actually being molested because it's not like, because they, they can't really know what's happening to them. I think that there's a some level of what a kid can know about themselves, but it's really difficult to distinguish whether it's like real or not. And so that's the caution that you have to kind of operate in when it comes to this situation. You know what I mean? You know, you shouldn't. You, and to me, it's like don't over affirm your kid's gender or they're a fucking child because they might just be saying dumb shit. You know. I would say that as a pediatrician and as a parent, I would say how wonderful my four-year-old and their imagination is. You know, one of the hardest things as we did this film, uh, especially in interviewing somebody like that, is uh, not like my instinct just to yell at them to, to begin with. But that's not what the, it's kind of a short film if it's just me going around yelling at people. The objective here is to ask questions. And that's, and that's okay. uh, all we did to the whole film is just, is just uh, is ask questions. And let gender ideology essentially hang itself is the idea. And, uh, and, and to show, is this something that can withstand scrutiny or not? Okay. Even just basic scrutiny. And what we discovered is that it can't. So what's happening in that exchange is, uh, first of all, she says, uh, talking about a child who, who sits down with her, is uh, she wants to know about their gender journey and where would you like to be in the future? So she's talking about a, a child's like five-year gender plan. Possibly. I mean, we didn't establish age in this scenario. What I will say is like, this is the thing. Is like I think there's a difference between asking every single kid in the world what their experience is with their gender versus like parents who take their kid in because they seem to be having an issue with their gender. You know what I mean? It's like difference between going around asking every kid in the world if they have ADHD versus like asking some kids that their parents brought them in because they think they have ADHD, whether they have ADHD or not. You know what I mean? Like it's not like we're asking everybody. And then it comes up to like, okay, well, how responsible are the parents in actually properly, uh, you know, addressing this? And then how responsible is like the person, uh, like this woman, how responsible are they in diagnosing it kind of a thing? But the point I was trying to get across to her is that children don't have a grasp on reality. I mean, even if in theory people could choose their own gender, which they can't, but if they could, it wouldn't make sense to say that a child could choose it. I would say, I don't know, I mean, obviously I disagree with people. Like they can, I feel like the weird, is a weird conversation to say you could choose your gender because I don't think that people, well, there are some fucking nuts out there that just decide they choose their gender, like trans trenders. They just like, oh, I'm going to choose my gender because like they're being dishonest about it. But for the most part, it's not like that it's like you're choosing your gender. It's more of like you are you're, you feel like your gender is incongruent with your sex, and then there's an issue there that needs to be resolved, right? So when it comes down to it, like trans people exist, and the best course of action to treat them is to go through gender affirming care. Remove the child part from it. Let's just talk about adults. You'd be like, well, that's not true. It's like, okay, but like you identify an issue, and you can say like some kind of an incongruence. I don't think it's classified as a mental disorder anymore. It's classified as like a sexual health condition, which is weird, but like whatever. So like you come in for an issue. It doesn't matter what it is. You have ADHD. What they do, you have ADHD, you have autism, you have uh, gender dysphoria, you have whatever. <clears throat> the first thing they do is they try to figure out if you like actually have this, which sometimes they can get it wrong. And then there's a whole conversation about detransitioners we never have, which is I think is bullshit. You come in, you have this particular issue. They start treating it in a way that helps you um, operate in society to the best of your ability as happy as you can be. And we've determined that that's not in all cases, but in most cases, some form of gender affirming care that ranges depending on the person and also the availability of money because obviously some people don't have enough money uh, to get like affirming care, especially trans women because it's like more expensive. Right? And that's the best way to operate. A lot of people will say, well, yeah, but the, the uh, suicide rates are the same after transition. The problem is, like we just said, Gender affirming care is very expensive for surgeries. So when you say transition, when you say they once they uh, transition, Transition can range from just socially transitioning where you're changing, you're growing your hair out and you're dressing more femininely or masculinely depending on you know which type of trans you are to actually getting surgeries. So when you say like, oh, I finished transitioning, what does that mean? Oh, I'm on, I'm on, therapy, I'm on hormone therapy for a year. You're not even close to any type of a finishing of a transition. So when we say after transition, the suicide rates stay the same, we're not really being honest because we're not actually determining where is after transition, what is post-transition. We've never actually established that in these types of things. And if it's just going on hormones, that's not even close to being done with, with the transition. So realistically speaking, the best way to operate in society when it comes to most trans people, and some people are different, there's some people with gender dysphoria that like don't need to change their identification of the gender and their sex. It comes down to like what's the best way to operate 
and that is just to have them transition and that like and that's usually what happens we of course we get it wrong sometimes but most of the time i think that we get tend to get it rather correct i know a lot of people bring up pedophiles and be like oh what about them so if they have a mental disorder we should just let them fuck kids kids need to be protected obviously in this circumstance right like having sex with a child hurts the child so no so obviously you can't let pedophiles fuck kids you need to i was gonna say something bad send them to an island maybe okay anyway when it comes to tra- changing your gender, it doesn't have a negative impact on society. The worst impact you could say is that it makes me confused because I might want to fuck a trans person. But it doesn't have a negative impact. You're not hurting anybody by letting them transition, right? Um, so we deal with any type of issue, like mental incongruence, I guess you'd call it, by helping the person assimilate to society to the best way possible based on that individual versus that society. And that's how you would operate there. Okay. Children believe in Santa Claus. So, like, what do they know about reality? If a t- like I said before, like a child would generally know that they're being molested. So, like this logic of like a child could really never understand anything about themselves. You'd have to say that if a child is getting molested, they can't tell you because what do they know? They don't know anything. They don't know reality. It's of course you have to operate differently with kids because they're dumb. But we need to understand that like some things you need to like look at and go like okay. Like this is a truth for like this could be the truth versus not. We can understand that kids are very impressionable, so we have to deal with gender very carefully with children, which gets like into a really awkward conversation, right? Um, so yeah, the child is four years old and believes that not only Santa Claus is real, but that fair. And four years old is. I, I wonder. I would. I wish he would. I hope. I, maybe he does in the interview. Does he ever ask what the age ranges he deals with are? Because I think four years old is way too young to be going to some kind of a gender therapist. Maybe eight though. Maybe if they're eight years old, they can see it. If they've been saying some dumb shit since they were four, if not dumb shit, sorry, they've been saying that they are trans since they're four or five years old. Like that makes a little bit more sense. A four year old, I don't think as anyway. Because like, what does four? I don't think a four year old is going to experience any real level of dysphoria. Right, so you wouldn't really be like, "Oh my God, this four-year-old is having this problem." It's once they get introduced to society and start going through like puberty, and, and and their body starts to change, where they're like, "Oh, this feels maybe a little bit wrong." Fairies and dragons, and it lives appropriately in this kind of fantasy world, and then the boy says that I'm a girl. That claim exists within the same fantasy world. This is just imagination. This is a kid who just doesn't doesn't understand the distinction between fantasy and reality. Um, so how can they make these determinations? But then again, as we, as we as found there, Michelle wouldn't even affirm that Santa doesn't exist. So I, that was I was unclear about that also. Like, what, are you? What do you actually think that Santa exists? What, what's happening? Did she do it's that? A, I didn't get that. But okay. As you're talking to these people, it's like your own. You, you feel yourself going slightly insane. Why does he have a Minecraft block in his house? It's interesting. So it was a pretty bewildering exchange there, but it only gets weirder from here. Let's keep watching. Okay. Male gametes. That's what makes me male. No, your your sperm don't make you male. Then what does? It's a constellation. Most of the time, it just does. Like most people with a penis are males, chinas or vaginas are females. Like most people, that is what makes you a male or a female. Um, then there's some mixture between biological uh, or genetic or or womb factor or even possible social factor, depending on the severity of the social factor, that could make you uh, trans. You know, I think it would have to be a very harsh social factor, like something very traumatic for it to make like a real impact. Uh, but yeah, I think there are people who are born trans. Like, I, I do genuinely believe that. So you can't really just say that they're not trained. How do you treat those people? Because if your option is like, we should just do conversion therapy, I just it, I, we, I think we've shown that that doesn't work. If that's your argument. I don't think that that's the best way to operate. In reality, in truth, okay? Whose truth are we talking about? The same truth that says we're sitting in this room right now, you and I. No, you're not listening. If I, if I see a chicken laying eggs and I say that's a female chicken laying eggs, did I assign female or am I just observing a physical reality that's happening in the world? Does a chicken have gender identity? Does a chicken cry? Well, Does chi- a chicken commit suicide? Let's Maybe. I don't know. They eat each other. Well, you the, the argument here would be like, you know, we are people and we have like we have the ability to engage in critical thought. So we're a bit different from like a chicken. Like we're obviously very different from an animal because we have the ability to have conversations that are much deeper than, you know, one like left, right, up or down or sideways. Right? Like chickens don't have the god. They don't have like a they don't have like religious ideologies. You know what I'm saying? And I do, I will say, I just have to say, like, there seems to be a little bit of a hypocrisy in saying that, like, we're only going to deal in absolute objective truths. But then when somebody suggests that God isn't real because there's no proof, all of a sudden you don't need proof anymore. I'm just saying, like, it doesn't seem like your fundamental ideology completely relies on an absolute truth to be, um, appointed in every situation maybe you're right maybe god does exist we have no proof of that neither do you and you're assur- you're asserting that it's real and it has to be real and you have a lot of conviction in that and you could probably compare that to some extent to trans people um 
with their feelings. Frame it because you're talking, you're trying to... A chicken to, has sex like any, like any biological organism. A chicken has an assigned gender, but a chicken doesn't have a gender identity. So we assign female to chickens when they lay eggs? That's a, we that's, assume they're female if they lay eggs. That right there will... Well, yeah, they are female because they don't have gender. Because they're, Go down for know. me as maybe one of the most... Out, probably, and, and every other thing make, that makes it on this particular list is also happened in the film, but certainly one of the most outrageous uh, exchanges I've ever had with anybody. And of course, see, this, this is what happens when you start asking questions to, to, the, to the gender, to the proponent of gender ideology, is um, they, you know, they start, they end up backing themselves into various corners and they have to okay. make um, increasingly more wild sort of claims to get themselves out of the corners that they've backed themselves into. Okay. And so when you're talking about sex, for example, like it's all on a spectrum and uh, sex is something that is, as she says in, in our conversation. You know, what I think is the issue here is like you really can't talk about trans kids in any capacity until you've established the logic for trans people who aren't kids because it gets so much more complicated. So like there's really like I think that's like probably the biggest disconnect here is that like we're, we're they're both jumping into the conversation and like they're not you have to start from square one when it comes to the conversation about trans people and square one is not kids conversation. She says that sex is a uh, assigned at birth. That just like doctors are just deciding this kind of arbitrarily. Well, if that's the nature of sex, then well, I think most the most time what about accurate. other like if you're born a boy, you're probably a boy, you know. Other organisms aside from human beings. Okay, we would also say that a, when a chicken is laying eggs, oh well, that's a female chicken. Are we assigning that? Is that is that is that just something we've decided? The chicken is female. Well, again, like they don't have a grasp on reality outside of eating and shitting out eggs, so it's a little bit different. Or is the chicken female? And if the chicken is female, then that would tell us something about the nature of biological. Like if I sat here and said, like, should we be able to eat baby chickens? You'd be like, yeah, sure. It was like, can we eat baby people? No, those are people. It's like, okay, so you know that there's a difference between a chicken and a person instantaneously. So like what you're doing is quite, is a bit dishonest. Sex, which is that it's not assigned. It is or maybe it's not dishonest. I think he's making a reasonable criticism. He just, I just think that like nobody's saying that like, well, chickens don't know fucking dick, bro. Like, would you like, oh, can we can chickens lay eggs? Oh, should we eat eating chickens? Right. Yeah. Can we eat people? No. OK, so we know that there's different things it's observed, but she can't go along with that. And so she starts talking about the chicken's gender identity and whether chickens commit suicide. Uh, well, her argument about the suicide, which is very unclear. I don't know how much they they cut out. The argument there is that like chickens don't be, have like intense levels of like, dysphoria associated with any parts of them. So they don't tend to get depressed in the same way that humans do to the point where they'll kill themselves. That's the point that she's trying to make. Obviously, it's not very clear whether that's because Matt cut out some stuff or because she just didn't make herself clear. That's a problem. But obviously, this woman probably wouldn't do very well. It's just one of those things where it's like she's not good at having a conversation with somebody that doesn't understand gender about gender. Um, and it doesn't get much better from there. Well, last week, Kim Kardashian announced her new role as chief taste consultant for it? Beyond Meat, an alternative. Wait, was that it? That was the whole thing? I thought there's going to be more. Wait. Meat maker. According to a Bloomberg. I don't like fake things. I, I like the real. Oh, it seems like an ad. Now it's prime. I want to pass up. So ready for it. Okay. The I was confused. Meat function. So medical. Instead. At what age does the medical transition begin with uh, medication? So medical affirmation begins when the patient says they're ready for it. Yeah, that makes me uncomfortable. So that could be a, a kiddo who is just starting puberty and panicking because they're getting breast buds. Or okay. So we're talking about like 10 to 12 year olds. I think you start, I mean, it depends on the person. Some people start puberty earlier, like around eight or nine. Some start like later. Their, their penis is getting bigger and busier and they're worried about all kinds of masculine changes. And that way, puberty blockers, which are completely reversible and don't have permanent effects. See, that's the thing is like, okay, let's just say that a per puberty blocker doesn't have a, uh, is, is reversible, doesn't have a, a permanent effect. Let's just say that's true, which I don't even know if it is. They're referring to it as if you come off of the period blocker. So they're like, yeah, puberty blockers are reversible and they, they have no negative effects. But the thing is, is that like if you go on a puberty blocker and you prevent your puberty, it's going to re like re reduce and possibly like honestly remove your ability to have a kid if you maintain this course. So like you're not being entirely honest or accurate. You're kind of just like spouting like a talking point, you know. So assuming that they come off the puberty blocker in a short period of time, probably reversible. Assuming that they don't, they may not be able to have babies for the rest of their life. You know, um, that's that's what I'm trying to establish, and I don't think that we get the right conversation about it when we talk about it like that. Are wonderful because we can put that pause on puberty, just like if you were listening to music, you put the pause on, and we stop the blockers, and puberty would go right back to where it was. The next note in the song just delayed that period of time. This is a part from later in the film as we start getting into more of the specifics here about. 
puberty blockers. And I'm, I'm not going to say myself right now a lot in response to that because you have to go watch the film. Um, because as I said, we, I'm asking questions and we don't just ask questions of people on this side. We bring in other people. So there's a, there's a little bit of a back and forth here, but we're going to get a response in the film to this claim that puberty okay. can just be, just be, you know, just pause it. As she says, like, like music, does the human body work that way? Probably not. No. I mean, is, is, is that the way it works where you can take a drug to intentionally? No, she's not very good at talking to him. That see, that's the thing. So like, generally speaking, Let's not call it debaters. Let's call it conversationalists. Matt, for a living, talks to people. Whether you agree with Matt or not, he's decent at talk. He's good at talking to people, right? He knows how to talk to people about what he thinks, and he has a platform of like almost a million people talking to people because he knows how to express himself like a, like better than most people do. Most people live in their own bubble, and so they don't really know how to talk to people that don't agree with them. So whether this woman is right or like it's. Imp- it's not this woman's never going to be able to convince Matt or anybody else that doesn't agree with her because she's not used to talking to people who don't agree with her. So it's never going to work out. You usually need somebody to like bridge the gap. That's like, okay, I um, hear what she's saying. I know what she means. In some cases, there's areas where I agree versus disagree. I know what your issue is because I've been there before and I can empathize with you as a skeptic, uh, someone who's skeptical of trans people. So let's have the conversation now. Problem is, is that most people aren't really there. Most people just don't know how to necessarily talk to people that are outside of their like bubble or or opinion because most people just hang out with each other. Like usually you'll hang out with somebody whose like opinions align with your own. So you don't need to qualify everything that you say. Like you notice every time we talk about these, if you don't like this is the this is the difficulty talking about trans issues is you have to qualify every single aspect of everything you're saying every time you talk about it or else it's very easy for people to come in and misinterpret what you're saying, which is what happened in my last video, is I didn't qualify everything. I did qualify most things. <laughs> and uh, so like that's where the, the difficulty comes in. And you have an audience of people who hear something and they get very sensitive. They go like, no, you're wrong. It's like, okay, well, just listen a little bit. But they have a difficult difficulty listening. Because just like this girl that he's talking to, person, I don't fucking know, isn't good at talking to people outside their bubble. A lot of people, even in my own audience, they're not really great at listening to opinions that don't align with their own um and because they're also not used to talking to people outside their bubble and so like they, they there needs to be a ton of qualifying and even then they, they they're not necessarily going to listen to what what's being said um interfere with certain normal healthy processes and you could take and then there's there's no negative consequences at all just stop taking the drug and pick up where you left off i'm sure there is i don't know exactly what they which, are. of course the, the interesting thing is that even if that was true which it isn't as you'll see in the film but even if it was true, well, then wouldn't that mean, I mean, if a child's taking puberty blockers to stop their normal development, and then we're just putting it on pause for, let's say, five years, okay. and then they decide that, okay, I don't want to take this anymore. Well, at a minimum, now they're going to be five years behind in their growth and development. Probably, yeah, So sure. even according to her version of events, like, at a minimum, you're going... I think you would, the, the general argument against that would be somebody who goes on puberty blockers... See, this is a really hard conversation to have because we never have the right conversation about detransitioning ever. That's the really fucked up thing. And this is something that helps conservatives because when detransitioners come forward, progressives tell you to shut the fuck up. Your experience doesn't matter. It's just going to be interpreted as transphobia. But you need to listen to these people because like I have a, a, tra- a friend who detransitioned. They're like, yeah, the pr- I went in thinking I had gender dysphoria. I was a kid. And the doctor's like, you have gender dysphoria. We're going to put you, we're going to start you on treatment. That's not the way that you should do this. It should take... A, quite a while to discover if somebody has gender dysphoria. It should be, it's a very difficult thing. And I feel like we're over prescribing. And then she's like, yeah, I just had like, dep- I have like depression and anxiety, other things. And those things tend to be linked with gender dysphoria. So they can be misdiagnosed. But a lot of times with some doctors, I don't know how many because we don't talk about it the right way. You'll say, hey, I think I have this thing. And they'll be like, well, let's just, oh, sure. Here's your medication, especially in fucking America, bro, where they're like looking to give out, like, oh, here you go. They're looking to dole out meds. So we can't have the right conversation about detransitioners. So we can't even really talk about this in the right way because we don't. We're not allowed to have conversations about it. We we can't talk about detransitioners. Like, what percentage of people are detransitioning? Like, what are the percentage of people who are detrans? Gender dysphoria is having like a deep uh, discomfort, um, a deep level of distress associated with your gender identity not matching your biological sex. So if you're born a dude, 
and like you're born with a wiener and that's your boy more normally you'd be a boy but like this person has so much like distress and dysphoria that like they're considering suicide because they don't identify as a male and then like you operate and, you know you go through that process the point i was trying to make though is like we don't really know what the true detransitioning statistic is and we don't know what point people are detransitioning in and a lot of times when we talk about it people are like well yeah but you know what i talked to the surgeon who did gender who does gender affirming care and they say that like ninety eight percent of their 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 the people that they that they get they get care from or they give care to um, are happy with it. So they they that detransitioning must be like two percent. It's like no, that's of people who went that far. What about people who just stopped social transitioning? What about people who came off puberty blockers? What about people who came off of going on uh, hormone therapy for two years? What about people? There's so the detransitioning is such a wide spectrum, and that also means detransitioning is a wide spectrum. And we're very afraid, uh, like society is too afraid or promptly progressives are too afraid to talk about the transitioners because they think it's transphobic but the goal should be to have the highest positive output of diagnosing trans people not just like yep you're trans and just and then just moving on as if it's the truth it's a difficult thing and it's a difficult conversation to have with people but i feel like therapists probably aren't doing the right thing and when you get into more liberal areas or pro progressive areas you're probably going to see more misdiagnoses but when you get to more conservative areas you're going to see um also misdiagnoses because they won't even talk about it right so we, we kind of it, it's very difficult to get to the meat and potatoes of the situation you're going to have stunted growth and you're going to have someone who is behind. and i think what i was saying before is like it i don't know how normal it is for somebody to go on hormone blockers for five years and then detransition i think you normally go on like the puberty blocker and then you start going on a hormone like i i think and i could be wrong you go on hormone blockers puberty blockers and then you just don't go through a puberty for a while and then you start going on uh, either like the hormones that are would be like for your gender identity or you would just come off of them. I don't know if it would take five years, but that's a whole, again, we don't have the right conversation about detransitioning, so who the fuck knows? Behind in their physical development. But actually, the consequences are a lot worse than that, as we uh, discover in the film and as right, we get into see it. Um, in this next exchange about... Do you think it's because they want to put push them through or a bias by a therapist? I mean, like, it could be a possible push them through for the drug money, you know, for doctors. I think that there also is therapy biases sometimes. I think there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of humans doing things and humans fuck up. So out the puberty blockers themselves. What are they? What do they do? Like ideally, I'd say that just wait till 18 and, every, and I, I, that to transition. Uh, you know, the issue with that is a lot of trans people are like, yeah, but like I get really upset when I go through the puberty that doesn't align with my gender identity. And then they get like very suicidal because like they're starting to develop, let's say, a trans woman in a very masculine way. And they're like, this really upsets me. This makes me really uncomfortable. I'm like really sad. I'm growing through this and it makes me really upset. You know, um, or a trans uh, man who might be growing up feminine and be like, this really upsets me. It's really sick. The thing is, is that like, again, it's easier to get masculizing surgery and cheaper than it is to get feminizing surgery. So there's so many different moving parts here. That's why it's such a hard conversation to talk about. Uh, what is their, what, what is their actual purpose? Uh, let's watch that. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which mm -hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders. Yeah, I think that the way that it chemi like chemically castrates them is it re reduces their ability to like produce cum <laughs> or sperm, uh, which is one of the things I think that you're trying to do when you're trying to detransition somebody. So it is a bit bizarre. It becomes a little uncomfortable when you talk about it like that. You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview because it seems like it's going in a particular direction. Yeah, see, like that's the thing. Is like you, you, you know, this is one of the things that I have. I can understand. See, when we were talking to the other person, it felt like a very big setup and gotcha. This person is, you know who Matt, you should know enough who Matt Walsh is to know he's going to ask you hard questions. And he's like, hey, this is a similar drug to be used for this. And instead of being, I'm disengaging from it, you disengage, you've already lost the fight. And he gets, you're already a bad example. Uh, and you, you've completely, you, you, she, by taking this interview and then walking off the second he asks her a hard question, she's destroyed the entire conversation about uh, transgender people. When it comes to Matt's audience, you should be looking at this as an opportunity to talk to somebody about this issue um, in a way where you might be able to change the minds of people who identify with Matt Walsh, which hopefully I was able to do or am hopefully able to do as we, we talk about these segments. And she's missing her opportunity. I think that's the biggest issue here. It's like, you know, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, you're a medical professional. I am a medical professional. So you yeah. don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids or? You should. Yeah. I'm a physician and I use medication. You're choosing exploitive words, drugs. I give. I'm, I'm choosing a chemical word consumption. that was in a dictionary. That's not a correct term for puberty blocking. I, mean, I could like look it up on my phone, but I'm pretty sure if I looked it up. Like, you you can look it up on your phone. It says medical definition: the administration of a drug to bring about a marked reduction in the body's production of androgens and especially testosterone. And I'm saying, yeah. as a pediatrician, 
who takes care of hundreds of these kids, when you use that terminology, you were being malignant and harmful. I mean, there are some who would say that giving chemical castration drugs to kids is malignant and harmful. It's about the context of caring for a child and... and <laughs> she gets she's getting so triggered so quickly. She really shouldn't have taken this conversation because she's doing an abysmal job. Like, yeah, you'd be like, yeah, you know what? That's true. And you would say, like, you know, what it does is, like you just said, it reduces their ability to basically... Look at the fur face. It's kind of funny. It reduces their ability to produce, like, testosterone and hormones. And, like, yeah. Um, but when we give it to a sex offender, we're trying to reduce their, their them because they're molesting kids. Which, by the way, seems like a pretty easy punishment. Because I feel like that's not a punishment enough for a sex offender. If you're a sex offender and you're having that kind of an issue, I mean, can't you just come off the pill and all of a sudden your shit's back to normal? Like, what's stopping them from just coming off the pill? Um... But like, try to engage in the conversation. Be like, yeah, that's interesting, and then talk about like why you're using the pill. How like one is a punishment for a sex offender versus the other one is actually not a punishment for the kid. From their perspective, they're just trying to live their truth, and you have these things. But she instantly gets like upset. You know, it's she just she shouldn't have taken the conversation if she wasn't ready. This is not even like that hard of a question. I feel like it's like yeah, that's a really interesting point, Matt. Let's explore that together. You know, that's a that's a very. <laughs> but she's just like instantly fuck this. You're not really gonna encapsulate an audience. Like the people who already agree with her are gonna be like, yeah, good move. The people who don't agree with her are gonna be like, Ugh. you know. Seeing the the suffering that kids can have that have not been in affirmative home situations. So that was the part in our conversation where things got um, sussy. Things got a bit contentious, but I wouldn't say that, that, it, that that's when they started to get contentious. Actually, what we discovered in doing these interviews is that, um, you know, I kind of knew going in, uh, I, I had certain points in mind where, where I thought, okay, well, when I ask this question, um, it, you know, things might get a little bit tense. And I it's so interesting. I wonder if people didn't know who Matt was when they came in. You should have done your research, but maybe it's going to be like an impractical joker situation where it's like, what is a woman part two? And then like, everybody's like, I don't even know who the fuck you are, Matt. You're trying to name out. You know what I mean? Like we're like the impractical joke. Same thing with Jackass. It made it more difficult for them to try to like almost like punk people or uh, get them to engage in a conversation without knowing who the person was. You know? I, I kind of know because well, that's 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 more of a challenging question. And what I found so often in these interviews is that things got tense much earlier than I originally thought they would, because there were questions that I thought would be really easy for the person that I'm talking to that turned out not to be easy at all. Like what? questions like, "What's a woman? Uh, what's the difference between sex and gender?" You know, these are like th that's. I, I, you know, when I watched the, him talk to the ther the, the, the gender professor, the gender professor gave him quite, kind of a good answer. He was like, yeah, so sex is like your absolute objective biology and gender is the way, like basically your relationship with your, bio like the way your relationship with your gender from a mental perspective. I don't think that's a horrible, you might disagree with that, but that doesn't make it bad. Um, did you actually just say the criticism from, on your from your Matt Walsh video was just from conservatives? The more disingenuous and bad faith than he was by asking the. I don't know what you mean. Did I say? I mean, I would imagine most conservative leaning people were the ones that were upset with my. If you have something that you like to say, be my guest. I just don't know. I feel like that's an interesting question. Why don't you? You should ask me or express to me my your problem with my video. So if I misspoke, or then you can I can address it here. Because what you're phrasing is a little bit of like a gotcha question. Well, just to be like, hey, you know what? I'm not a conservative and I had XYZ issue with your thing. Could you clarify it? You know what I'm saying? Um, so maybe you just respond to that here. Because you popped in the stream like really late and I've already answered a lot of the questions from that. So like, hey, just throw like copy paste a comment that you'd like me to answer. Totally 100% down to talk about it. Like absolutely no problem with it. Just copy, like pop into the stream and be like, hey, I have this issue. What's that? Yada, yada, yada. That's all you have to do. You pop into the stream and just ask me the question. That's supposed to be a softball. But even that, things start to go off the rails in a lot of these interviews when I ask even a question like that. Because what we found is that um, these people, these gender ideologues, especially the ones who are in this industry and they're making a lot of money off of promoting gender confusion, especially in kids. I mean, they, I've said before, they might be making money like selling drugs. So that's possible. I guess, I guess you could extrapolate. I guess I, I said that to an extent. That's a possible narrative, but I guess, yeah, maybe. I just don't, I just don't think that's what most people are doing, but I think it could be a motivator for some people, um, you know, pushing medications. It's that what we found is that they are not prepared to encounter any skepticism at all. They're not prepared to answer any questions. The only questions they're prepared to answer. <laughs> you think they would be prepped. They know who this, they should know. Are who the questions answer. that are not really questions at all, right? Questions like, uh, how meaningful is it to you to be able to help people in their gender journey? Like that, those kind of questions where it's just a setup for them to give a pre-planned, canned, uh, you know, speech. Yeah, so by sure. the time we got to this exchange, it had already gotten pretty tense. And, uh, 
And of course, I ask her about Lupron. Now, this is a drug that she gives to kids. And as we hear from somebody else in the film, Scott Nugent, um, who has experience with these kinds of drugs, personal experience, this drug in particular is a drug. It is actually, by definition, chemical castration, which is why I wasn't planning on doing this, but I pulled out my phone, look up the, de- the definition of chemical castration. She, sa- she says that chemical castration, that's an exploitative word, and I'm being malignant and harmful. Okay, so here we go. Here we, we the person uh, responded. So, okay, let me just kind of... There's a good comment. Okay, yeah, I'll address the comment. Give me like one second. I just want to fucking figure out how I can get this comment like almost off screen here on screen. Okay. Gender is not a social construct in the sense that it is made up. Okay. It is a social construct because it allows us to define people and interact. Gender, however, is also a reflection of biology and a manifestation through clothing, language, and however other ways human interact and represent themselves to other people. Just because there are deviations like gender nonconforming people does not mean that gender is up for interpretation and that is made up. I don't know what to say to this comment because I don't really disagree. I don't think I ever said that you can make up gender. I don't really know what this means. Because like, okay, gender is a social construct. Almost everything is a social construct. Everything is a different, the way that we express social constructs is going to be different depending on the specifics. Like, yeah, I agree with this. I just don't know what, how is this like a nay-nay on what I said? Like, I, that's why I don't understand. Right? So like, even like your hands are social constructs. Like your hand is a social construct. Your hand physically and literally objectively exists. But the way that we label what a hand is, is like a generally like a social construct. But it's not like a super, uh, I'd say malleable social construct. Because your hand's not going to really change too much. When it comes to things like from a more mental perspective, like the idea of gender is a social construct. Even men and women even at society without any trans people and no um even in a society with no trans people and very hard affirmed social like uh, you know whatever man and woman what a man and a woman is ranges from every society so for instance in like um in some societies women would have to wear like completely say completely clothed up um and the man has full control. In our like more Western societies, women can wear kind of whatever they want. Men can wear whatever they want. You're still a man and a woman. It's just that you have the ability to express what that means in a society differently. And in our society, as things change and things become less gendered, they are still gendered, but they become less gendered. The conversation like, what does it mean to be a man and a woman kind of shift? You know, from a biological sense, they're never going to shift. A man biologically has a penis and balls, right? Um, you know, for the most part, it, w- without talking about intersex people, women, vagina, ovaries, right? So that's like a biological truth. But then there is also like the conversation about the way that he, the brain interprets these things and about how like trans people exist, whether we like it or not. And they're actually, like, they, they exist as what I would call an or- like, to not to be transphobic, some kind of like an incongruence or abnormality that we have to address. Just like somebody with like autism has like, a, and these are, I know I'm using like very harsh words, so I'm sorry, but like abnormality. So like you have autism, you struggle to identify with society. How do you treat that? You have, tr- you have, you have gender dysphoria, you struggle to identify with society. How do you treat that? Uh, you're somebody who is born with, uh, you know, some kind of an autoimmune disease. You struggle to deal with society. How do you operate with that? And we try to treat people for lack of a better term to help them um, exist in society more easily depending on their particular needs. So, like, I don't know exactly what this comment means. Maybe I misspoke about gender being a social construct. I never said it was just made up, so I don't think that this person is saying anything to me. I don't know where they got it from. Maybe I misspoke. It's possible. I would never say that just because a social construct exists means that we can do whatever we want with it. I even made an absolute stance that, like, you can't identify like as a deer because like gender is a social construct but it refers to like you know a spectrum between male and female it's a social construct based on biology it's embarrassing to see an academic try and negate the fact when he asked the question what is a woman do you believe in gender binary maybe it's not clear i don't know i am not even trying to be rude i don't know i'm not entirely sure what you're i don't know what you're saying i'm not trying i i maybe it's just me i'm struggling I, it could totally just be me all right hold on I'm not understanding like what point you're trying to make when you're talking to me and like what I'm trying to like figure out how to get this fucking chat out here. It's so weird. I'm not. Okay. So it's a social construct based on biology. Yeah. All social constructs are based in some kind of like an absolute reality. Right. Um, it's embarrassing to see an academic try to negate that fact when asked the question, what do you think is a woman? Well, they're not really negating it. They're just saying that gender and sex, the, 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 the gender, uh, professor even said that gender and sex are deeply connected. Like, they're even saying gender and sex are deeply connected. They're not even like mo- a lot of trans people will give you like a bullshit answer that gender and sex have nothing to do with each other. They have everything to do with each other. 
Uh, most of the time, people's gender and, and sex align. Um, so I don't know who is this referring to. Do you believe gender is binary? I mean, I guess not. I guess you wouldn't if you think that non-binary people are valid. If there's like a, you know, I mean, I guess you call it bimodial. I don't know. I'm just not sure what question you're really asking because I feel like you're misrepresenting. Or the, see, this a lot of the comments seem to be either I spoke wrong or people are misrepresenting what I said. So it's like weird. It's just like a little. I'm very confused about like what. If you have like a specific question, maybe that you could get or a specific, another comment or something, or rephrase it, and I could probably I could try to address what you're trying to say. Wonderful by using that word. Well, look up the definition of chemical castration, and that uh -huh. is a puberty blocker. That is, by yeah. definition, yeah. when you give a kid a puberty blocker, you are performing chemical castration on the kid. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's the reality. Period. And we know that because Lupron specifically has been used to chemically castrate sex offenders. Correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe they bring up the con the connotation of being made up social construct, like more of a fan. Yeah, no, I don't. but the social constructs aren't like made up. It's just really more social interpretations on things. Like uh, music, um, music is like exists, like objectively. But the way that we different cultures have different types of music, so like that would be the social construct of music. Like music be a, being the fact that music is appealing to people um, exists in an objective world because we've noticed that. But the way in which music is created and like different music genres, for instance, those are socially constructed genres that are based off of biology. Oh, I like the way that this set of things are this this set of instruments played together sounds this is good music i'm gonna label this rock music those are like the social contract but music objectively exists but the way that music like manifests is a social contract right you see what i'm saying um sex is a social construct because we need to define and categorize in a certain way they have been multiple ways to define okay i get what you're saying like biological sex is not a social construct what we label biological sex is a social like we could have we like we could have very easily instead of made it male and female poop and pee and it still would have meant the same thing in our society but it still would have been like an objective truth of like you know penis balls vagina all that stuff i know what you're saying but you know uh, yeah i get what you're saying but like labeling oftentimes is like social con like language is a social construct, but we know that like language exists absolutely. It's just different based on the different people who talk about stuff. So if you don't believe gender is a binary, okay, sorry, I'm just so if you don't believe gender is a binary, then basically I'm not sure how you would believe a woman is based on bi biology and not just a cultural marker. The answer to what is a woman is a person is XX, not someone that tries to look like XY. That is a trans woman. Do you believe trans women are women? Yeah, I do believe trans women are women. They're just different from cis women. Okay, so hold on. I'm just, I'm trying to. I okay. I the, the only thing that's getting me here is that like I think that you're not at your. You see, you're you're rather unclear about asking me a question. Okay. Yeah, no, I I get what you're saying. Okay, if you don't believe gender is a binary, well, I said I do believe gender would be a binary, then basically I'm not sure how you would believe a woman is based on biology and not just a cultural marker. I do, I don't even know what you're trying to say. Maybe this is my, I might be a fucking idiot today. Do I believe gender is a binary? No. I mean, people, there's, there's, trans, there's like men, women, and then like in between. I think non binary people are, they're, it's weird to me, but I guess it's not a binary. <laughs> Um, I just, I'm, it's bizarre to me. That's what I'll just say. Um, I'm not sure how you would believe a woman is based on biology, but women are based on biology. I'm just, no, no, no. I know what you're saying. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding what you're trying to say because you're saying if I don't believe in a binary, if you don't believe gender is binary, I'm not sure how you would believe a woman is based on biology, but they are based on biology because we know that there are biological, biological sex characteristics that exist objectively. And most women identify with those. But then there's a deeper conversation about like the way that women are, are you know manifest themselves in society and like the different cultural aspects of like what a woman woman is and then we talked about like height weight um like muscular like how muscular you are and our society it, it you can be women are can be tall short fat skinny muscular you know deep voice not so deep voice there are women with beards and mustaches a lot of times they may have like pcos there's a lot yeah well, even like sex isn't necessarily binary. You'd consider it bimodial because there are some kind of like trans intersex people are a an anomaly, but they still exist. And I think that a lot of the, the times when people talk about 
transgender people there i think that there's a biological or a womb aspect there i don't think that social conditioning has a huge factor on transness unless it's like really harsh social like i'll give you an example of a harsh social condition that could probably manifest a trans person if if you if your kid is born a boy and then you swear they're a girl and you live through like every day that you're a girl you're a girl and you give them like you you know you have them identify a girl etc you could probably like that's a really deep social conditioning that would be honestly i think abuse uh, to force that kid into believing that they're a girl when they're actually a boy. Does that make sense? Right. Harsh social conditions can definitely influence people's gender. But like most of the time, I don't think that they can. I think most people who are trans are born that way. And so like when you look at it, like you have. You, okay, let's do, let's try to. Like, it's, it's so difficult to. Oh, I just opened up Star Wars. Fuck. No, no, no. Get out of here. Probably be more entertaining than what we're doing right now. Sorry, open up Star Wars. Let me just let me just remove this. Sorry. How do I get rid of this? Get out of here. Oh my god. We I I hit the wrong button. Okay. Let me get, let me unpin this. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have um <laughs> we have sex and then we have like gender, right? So sex is an expression of like the body. Like that's like it's a body expression. The overwhelming pe majority of people are either male or female, but there are some people who align in between here. So like, it's mostly like, you know, there's a few people in the middle. Let's say like 2% or like 1% of those people. Now, these people exist as an, as an anomaly. Just like follow me where I'm going here. From a gender perspective, we have the same thing. We have a male and then we have a female. And then we have people who like align somewhere in between, we'll say, right? The way that we treat intersex people is usually either the parents or the, usually the parents will choose which gender they are. So it's actually not all in the middle. Like you have like intersex, you have pseudo male intersex and pseudo female intersex. So what that means is like you'll have somebody with more like male sex characteristics, but they'll have some female ones and then like more female sex characteristics. But they, they might have like a penis of balls and like ovaries or here they might have like a vagina and ovaries and like, and like I don't know, fucking wiener. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And the way that we deal with this abnormality is we usually have the parents choose to either go the more female or more male route. Like if you're born with both, like, and that's usually the way we do, but these people still exist, right? Uh, and they like, they'll go either direction, right? When it comes to gender, it's like similar to that, but it's not something that you could immediately diagnose when they come out of the womb, right? Um, so they get older and they start to go like, okay, I have an issue. And then all of a sudden the conversation is like, okay, now they're older and they would be able to choose their gender. If there was a biological absolute marker for figuring out if somebody was a male or female gender wise that disaligned with their sex, um, this is more than mine, by the way, then we would have, parents would just choose it from birth and we would be have no problem here. But the problem is it doesn't manifest itself like that. So then they get older and rather than the parents being able to say like, okay, I have the absolute, all of a sudden it's like the, 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 the kid, the person, We'll say the person here, depending on how old they are, then they're like, okay, I'm going to choose to go male or female myself and figure out which way we're going to go. That makes, I mean, hope maybe that gets you to understand. Because when it comes to my perspective on gender or trans people, it has a lot to do with the existence of some kind of a mental incongruence that's no, like, it should probably classify as a mental disorder, but they did that to destigmatize. They removed it from that classification so it would destigmatize it. But, like, same thing with like ADHD. It's like you have like a particular issue in society, and now we need to operate in a way that makes it so that it's easier for you to live in society and helping them transition, depend, well, it's depending on the person, but helping them uh, go through their um, process to be better, make it easier for them to function in society. That's the way that I lean to. It might as well be an absolute biological marker. I'm not a biologist, but that's my understanding. I don't think that there's an absolute biological marker for when it comes to gender dysphoria, which is like a men which is more of like an in the mind mental issue rather than like intersex is not like a mental issue. It's like a literal physical condition that you could be like, oh, that's a problem. We need to do this. You know what I mean? Um, that's more of where it comes down to. And I think a lot of it comes down to the way that we have conversations about mentality. Uh, or like the mental state of people. Did I just fuck, did I fuck my nails? Uh, the mental state of people and like how those things dif they manifest differently in different people. Um, more than anything else, if that, ma if that makes any sense. Hopefully that helps. I don't think that you're ever going to be like, oh, I get it today. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am. But you, it was ready to sit with you. So do you have a problem with the statement trans women are not women? Do I have a problem with it? I mean, like, I don't agree with it. I don't have any personal connection. So if you're like, I don't think trans women are women, I'm like, okay, I disagree with you. I think trans women are women. I just think that they're different from cisgender women. So that's like, that's just an interpretation issue. 
You know, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, you transphobe. I'm just going to be like, yeah, I disagree. You know, because trans women and, and cis women are different. At the end of the day, regardless of what your ideology is, they're different, right? Um, I thought they did drain sands of dysphoria people and so they could see something. I don't know if that those were ever, ever like um, made to be absolute objective facts. So I don't think so. I think that they did some studies and found some similarities, but I don't think that they've ever like super substantiated the claim yet. If they did, this conversation would be much easier. You notice in that exchange, by the way, she didn't deny. She she takes issue with the words that I'm using. She threatens to get up and storm out. Um, she's offended by the by the way that I'm phrasing it, the words. But she never says, "Oh no, that's 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 totally incorrect." Lupron does not do that. Lupron's never been used that way. Doesn't say that. Lupron the third. Look it up. That's a stupid joke. Yes, you can. I don't have to tell you that, that uh, gas prices are really high right now. You've probably noticed yourself every this time. Is another you ad? Pump, it gives you heartburn. Well, here's the good news. There's an incredible app that everybody who buys gas needs to know. Oh my God, Matt, you're fucking balling. This guy has almost 2 million views with two fucking ads in it. Holy shit. This guy made in a day what I make in a year. Just use my promo code Walsh. Now that's oh code. Oh my God. Is what Jesus is a woman. Christ. And probably he's not going to. But listen, it helps me because honestly, if you're watching this video now, you probably got an ad for his fucking thing. So you know what? Hey, capitalism, baby. Prize you by now that she doesn't exactly have an answer for it. It's so interesting that I get so many uh, ads for what is a woman because it makes me feel like a lot of people that watch myself are conservative because they usually do targeted ads. So interesting. I mean, I'm, it is what it is, bro. I don't give a fuck. But let's uh, let's listen to what she comes up with. So we're going on this journey. Boys can be girls. Girls can be boys. Men can be women. Women can be men. It makes sure. me wonder. I guess. What, what is a woman? What is a woman? A woman is someone right. who claims that as their identity. It could be many things to many people. That was our answer. Well, a woman is anyone. And that was, by the way, not to give any spoilers away, but that is the answer from the left to the question. Which yeah, That's most of the people is going to be. A woman is somebody who feels like they're a woman, right? And like, that's why that's why it gets a little difficult to have the conversation about like what is and isn't a woman. Because it, it gets so, like, it's so difficult. Because it's okay. So I'm going to, I don't even know if I agree fully. Because I said that some, a woman is somebody who looks like a woman or, or excuse me, di identifies as a woman and makes a reasonable attempt to like express themselves as a woman in a society based on that society's standards, right? Like that's, that's, that's what I would say. And I know Matt would say that's a circular answer, but obviously like the first thing you're going to say is identify as a woman. But it's like, well, what does it mean to identify as a woman? The honest truth is what it means to identify as a woman to leftist people is nothing. It means like nothing. And the reason that they'd say that, and I'm, I'm still like exploring this myself, is because if you look at society, like, give like right now in chat, you could be like, give me some characteristics that women tend to like align with. So right, so you'd be like long hair, right? It's like long hair. Well, can women have short hair? Right? Can women have short hair? Yeah. Okay. So like then hair length doesn't have anything to do with women. Tits, that's good. You have boobies, right? Women have boobies, but some women don't have boobies. And in fact, some men have boobies. And on top of that, some men have like gyno tits where they have like actual women boobies. Are they still men? Yeah. So women can have boobies and also no boobies. And then men can also have boobies and no boobies. Now, you absolutely could say like, yeah, but most women have boobies. I get that. But like, there are some women that make exceptions. Then you said like, oh, what about facial hair? facial hair okay women don't have facial hair but some women do have facial hair some women have like pcos like the bearded like very bearded people that have like actual like legitimate beards so like women can have both facial hair and no facial hair right um then we talk about like masculine fa like or feminine facial fe feminine facial features we'll do three apps that absolutely most women have that but then there are some women with like very fem like very masculine facial features so you've you, you listen we've seen some busted up people okay become pregnant yes that is an argument but like that's where we would separate like if we remove any conversation about like penis vagina that aspect and we talk about the because we're talking about social presentation right that's what we're talking about so when you say get pregnant like yeah that's true i get what you're saying from like a biological perspective but getting pregnant isn't a social presentation like you're not going to inspect my genitalia to see if i'm a man or a woman you know what i mean um you know that would be wrong because you're probably young right <laughs> So like it's talk it's about it's about um presentation to society not about like what you can't see bad driving fucking great so there's bad driving women are horrible drivers but there are also some women who are good drivers right 
So like even if even only if even only like one percent of women are good drivers, they still exist. So when you look at these individually, these characteristics, you know, like weights, like you know, maybe you're like a little fat, but the women can also be skinny, right? And they can also be let's do skinny and muscular. That's probably better. So you, women, like maybe women, most of the time are very skinny or or, or non muscular. I'm gonna put in there, right? But then women can also be muscular, and you still consider them women, right? So. You could generally take some of these and say like, yeah, if I compound all these together, women tend to look like this. But then there are women who don't look like that at all. And you'd still call them a woman, right? And so it comes down to when we talk about gender, the re the biggest separation between like gender and sex is like, what does it matter to you? I guess you would say like, you're not going to do penis inspections on everybody. That would be a little weird. I mean, I mean, we used to do that in my high school, which was very awkward for me. I'm happy that they got rid of those. Um, that was horrible, miserable experience. But this is a conversation of gender is like the way that you like express yourself more than anything. How does society perceive you? And when we bring up examples like uh, Blair White, this I guarantee you most conservatives would say this is a woman. And you'd feel uncomfortable if Blair White was in the bathroom with you. Right? Like... This is this is like somebody you'd be like, yeah, this, I, this is uncomfortable if they're in the bathroom. With me, same thing with like Buck Angel. I brought this up earlier. Uh, hopefully, porn does not come up on my computer. <gasps> almost, almost porn. You say somebody like, oh, Buck Angel here, right? You'd say like, I would be uncomfortable if that man was in the bathroom with me, and I, and you were a woman, but this was a biological woman. And so I think that we generally understand that there are some people that you'd be like, yeah, I would not be comfortable with them being in the woman's best bathroom right um whatsoever right so we all kind of understand to an extent of like okay i get what you're saying even if you don't fully agree um but in your answer to the question what is a woman somebody who identifies with female traits that's what i heard yesterday but your point here is that those characteristics are completely arbitrary if those are arbitrary being a woman basically means nothing well first of all i said somebody who looks like a, or identifies as a woman and expresses themselves as a woman at a reasonable rate based on the current societal standards of that society Second of all, like, yeah, this is the trans argument that like most trait, like traits that men and women have are kind of from a societal perspective outside of dating, sports, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Dating and sports have nothing to do with who we are as a person when it comes to society's interaction with us. That's the argument, right? So like, bro, like if, let's say anybody, everybody has the equal opportunity to work any job in the, in, in the United States, we'll say. We'll keep it to a first world country. However, you being a man might make you better or worse for a particular job. And you being a woman might make you better or worse. So like maybe men would probably do better at like physical manual labor jobs. Women might do better at like caretaking jobs might be just something in the DNA. There are women who would probably do better than a lot of other men in physical jobs. And then there are men who would probably do better than a lot of other women in caretaking jobs. So, but at the end of the day, here's, here's a thing that you need to do. And if you can do it, you have the job. That's how society will usually work out. And so now that's the argument of like, what does it actually mean to be a man and a woman? And then you look at other things like social circles, right? Because we talk about the bathrooms as a social area, but like we don't ever talk about like male and female social areas. We have men nowadays already invading female social spaces, like bridal showers gay men are constantly going there we consider gay men feminine enough to identify in so, on a lot of social areas to be like women in the sense where like it's totally acceptable for a gay guy to go um into like a bridal shower area or be in a female circle gay men tend to, wouldn't tend to be in like a more male uh, circle or uh, you know socially a male circle what we consider like a more male circle and then if you have like a fucking butch lesbian, she, she's one, one of the guys, she's totally welcome in like a male um, area. A lot of the ways that we interact socially have to do with like the way people express themselves. So like a, like a butch gay lesbian, totally acceptable is with one of the boys, as long as they can, they're down to hang. Same thing with a feminine guy, totally down with uh, being in a female circle as long as they're down to hang. Right. And so, like, when we really get into the specifics of the question, it comes out to, like, what does it mean to society that you're a man or a woman? You know what I mean? Like, what does it mean to society if you're a man or a woman? And that's kind of the question. I'll bring sexuality into it. Okay. Let's just say it's a feminine man or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. You get my point that I make. What does it mean to society that, like, you're a man or a woman in, in nowadays outside of, like, sports and dating? 
we don't really care as individuals. It's more about how the person interacts. And we can observe general qualities based on the way the person interacts. But generally speaking, it doesn't really matter. And we're striving for a society that doesn't really necessarily care about those specifics, right? Like we're trying to strive for like a more equal society where it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, you have like an equal opportunity kind of a thing. That's the, that is the rationale there. And like I said, still exploring the concept of that. I think to me, it gets to a point where like, I don't really care if somebody identifies as a man or a woman because I don't give a shit. Because it means, I don't think it really means anything anymore. So that one spot that had a woman flesh or penis, at what point does that become a man? So like, that's a really good conversation because then it's like, okay, I think that we could shift the conversation away from like, what is a woman to what does it mean to you to identify as a woman? Because that's a totally different conversation. So a trans woman identifying as a woman, I don't think is the issue. But when you have a that like a trans woman who's very male presenting, going into a protected female space like a spa, totally different conversation. Because now those women are perceiving this trans woman as a man and saying like, this is uncomfortable. I don't want to be in here because of our normal interactions between men and women. That's a different conversation. Like I said, because like you're saying that I already said like I wouldn't have a trans woman in in sports, and I think that like the passability of a, of a of a trans person kind of is going to have an impact on whether they should go into a particular space. Like we said before, you would probably look at Blair White and go like, yeah, that person belongs in the, in the, um, that, that woman belongs in the woman's best restroom. You wouldn't feel comfortable with them in like the, in like a male locker room. Right. I wouldn't. Right. But that's like, a, that, that's like a, like if, but she, if she wasn't passable, if she looked like the guy from, uh, the, excuse me, the girl from, uh, it's ma'am from GameStop. You might be like, you know what? I might feel uncomfortable if this person's in the woman's locker room because they look very male presenting and I'm a little afraid, right? Now, whether that is right or wrong, that's a whole conversation. I could see why women would be very uncomfortable. Totally get it. But like, these are more nuanced conversations here where it's like, okay, what's going on? Honestly, we're probably better off shifting towards like gender neutral areas where it's like, I'm not saying a bunch of, I mean, like personally, like maybe like, like individualized bathrooms or something. I don't really know. But I think that like most of the time, <laughs> these issues go far beyond like the bathroom or the locker room, which can still be problems, but they're bigger issues in areas like sports. But for the most part, in most interactions, these aren't super, these situations don't necessarily matter, right? Like another con another conversation about like, um, would be like, okay, a good conversation be like, okay, well, how do we deal with the interaction of trans women when it comes to scholarships for cisgender women? That's a really good question. It's like, who cares if they identify as woman or not? Should a trans woman be able to have access to cisgendered woman um, scholarships? That's a better question. Because then you could be like, well, this trans woman is taking away from a scholarship from a cisgender woman. This is a really good conversation to have. And then we get deep into it. It's like, so what does it mean to be a woman? Well, for the most part, I would say that it's a collection of different experiences as a big part of it from when you're, uh, you know, like pre-puberty, post-puberty. So if you're somebody who transitions at 18 years old and you grew up as a boy, well, you might actually have some of the male advantage, right? Because some of the things that may impact women are like more social, like, hey, you're a girl. You should shut the fuck up or maybe you should go towards this job or maybe you wouldn't really like science. You should maybe gravitate away from that. And we would sometimes push people, not saying all the time, but push women away from certain roles and towards other roles where men tend to have a little bit more freedom, though they are also pushed away from some roles as well. And so you're like, okay, well, if you grew up, you know, as a man, as a boy, and you didn't transition until you're 20, well, then do you need that scholarship? Because you had similar opportunities as a, to a man because you were a man. And then we get to conversations like, yeah, trans scholarships. Like, okay, then we shouldn't have scholarships. And maybe we don't necessarily, and I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, but maybe we shouldn't have trans women uh, have female scholarships. Maybe we should create trans scholarships for trans people specifically so that they don't, you know, take over scholarships specifically for women, right? That's the conversation. It should be less about what if you are or aren't a woman and more of like, what does it mean for you to be a woman, right? What does that mean? Like, what is it that you're, oh, fuck, I just closed the Matt Walsh thing. I'm gonna get back up. What does it mean to you? Like, what do you, what do you, what would you like? Um, since you identify as a woman, as a woman, which is streaming does, now. Does that make sense? Um, she gives to kids, and as we hear from somebody else in the film, Scott Nugent, um, who has, is actually by definition chemical ca chemical castration. She, says, she right. says that chemical castration. That's a definition of chemical castration. Okay. Word, and I'm being malignant and harmful by using that word. Okay. Well, look up the definition of chemical castration, and that is. A puberty blocker. 
That is, by definition, when you give a kid a puberty blocker, you are performing chemical castration on the kid, period. And we know that because Lupron specifically has been used to chemically castrate sex offenders. You notice in that exchange, by the way, she didn't deny. She, she takes issue with the words that I'm using. She threatens to get up and storm out. Um, she's offended by the, by the way that I'm phrasing it, the words. But she never says, oh, no, that's, that's, that's totally incorrect. Lupron does not do that. Lupron has never been used that way. Doesn't say that. Because she can't. I don't have to tell you that, that uh, gas prices are really high. Oh my God, I already watched this too. Okay. My goodness, we got one. And now that's code, which is what is a woman? And get to the, the question, which is a question I ask uh, everyone, and uh, which is what is a woman? And probably is not going to surprise you by now that she doesn't exactly have an answer for it, but let's, uh, let's listen to what she comes up with. So we're going on this journey. Boys can be girls, girls can be boys, men can be women, women can be men. Okay, here we go. It makes me wonder what, what is a woman? What is a woman? A woman is someone who... You want to know what a woman is? You want to know the true answer to what is a woman? All right. Hold on. I need, I need a second, actually. You ready for the answer? That's it. It's the whole answer. That's what a woman is. That's what a woman is. That's fucked up, right? Sorry. <laughs> Just fucking get it, guys. I'll get it. Who claims that as our identity? It could be many things to many people. That was her answer. Well, a woman is anyone. And that was, by the way, not to give any spoilers away, but that is the answer from the last Here's where question, we which yeah, is a non answer. Yeah. It's the same thing as not answering at all. But that is that is the answer. A woman is someone who says they're a woman. Yeah, basically, I think that the question is like, what does it really matter what a woman is anymore? I think that's most of the question, and I think that's the conversation we'd be having is like, what what access should trans women have to like traditional cis women in like spaces? That's the, that's probably the better question more than anything else. And of course, to everyone who gives me that answer in the film, I have. And a you can still think that they're weird, you know. You're, that's, I mean, whatever. Sometimes I look at some people and I'm like, "You're kind of weird, bro." I'm not trying to be fucking rude, but that doesn't mean I don't, I don't, you know, validate them. Well, you know? well, a woman is someone who identifies as a woman. What are they identifying as? And around and around we go, because they don't have an answer to the question. This is a. Yeah, but again, they're like usually identifying as like what society they're identifying with the way society interacts with women. Like that's what they're identifying with. Like they want to be treated in the way that society treats women in some capacity. And again, we have that conversation and they want to express themselves to society based on the way society tr uh, uh, says women should express themselves based on that society. That's usually what like a woman is. And then again, it gets into a character like what is, well, generally speaking, maybe longer hair or maybe like being annoying and you can't drive a car, like things like that. That's what you do, you know, a medical doctor um, who can't tell you what a woman is. I mean, this is someone who, who if someone goes to her and says, as a man and says, I, you know, I'm really a woman and I want to transition into a woman. She will help facilitate that process, and yet she doesn't know what the word means. She doesn't actually know. She, by her own testimony, when someone says, I want to transition to a woman, she doesn't even know what that means. Like, what are you transitioning into? She has no idea, as we found over and over again in the film. And that was just a few minutes of the film. Um, only one person of the dozens that we spoke to. And I can tell you right now that... Did he talk to Blair White? Because I feel like that would have been a very... Like, a conservative trans woman would have been a really good conversation to have. Or Caitlyn Jenner or something. Like, I wish that that was... Is that in the film and I just don't know about it? I feel like if it was, we would know about it. Because I would have saw Blair White release. I was in this movie. Because I feel like that's probably the best tester. Is like, oh, there's a trans woman next to me. Like, do I say that they're just fucking insane and not a real woman? I would like to see how Matt interacts with, like, a trans woman like, with Blair White to see what he says about them. That's, um... What we heard in those clips there... Or Buck Angel, trans man. I think it would be great. I don't think any of it qualifies as quite the craziest thing we heard. The chicken part gets pretty close. Still not all the way there. There's, there's so much more that you need to see. But you have to go to whatiswoman.com and subscribe to see it um, a lot more. That's that a game third game ad. Too. Holy shit, man. Stop yourself. making so much money, bro. All right. Well, you know, interesting. Um, cool beans. That's all I really have to say, I think, here. Uh, it is time now to raid somebody on Twitch and get the fuck out of here. Um... Here, guys, we're going to watch Fortnite, right? You're going to see Fortnite because it was very suspicious, like a character from the popular hit video game Among Us. Um, and we saw an ad for an Among Us. Well, Peter Pants TV. Sure, I don't know. If you're trying to dunk on people, literally asking just what is a woman, then maybe they're not the issue. Well, the, the thing is, is that like, 
Um, no, I don't have time today to do Britney Simon. Sorry. The the thing is, is like, yeah, that's what they're going to give you as a woman because that's what they believe. Like, they just don't. They, that's that's it's why it's very abstract. That's why the left has a very difficult time defining what the fuck they're talking about. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone. Go down in the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.